What's happening guys? All right, just to start things off, I'm making this video because I like Garrett. I like what he does with his channel. Uh, he wants to make this a conversation, so I want to help him out in that area. And you can't have a conversation about a Big 12 school without getting another opinion from another Big 12 school, mainly the chief rival of the school in question. So disclaimer, a lot of fans of the Big Ten are probably going to look at this video and say, I hate the Big Ten. They're going to take me as some anti-Big Ten person. I don't have anything against the Big Ten. Nothing at all. You're just, you're probably not going to like some of the things I have to say about the Big Ten. And I'm sorry about that, but this is, this is what I'm doing. Disclaimer. And to the Texas fans, y'all know me. Y'all know I've been repping the Sooners on here for two seasons now. And, um... Look, I am making this video not to antagonize Texas. I'll try not to as much as possible. So I would appreciate reciprocal behavior, but it might not happen, but whatever. And I'm not going to sit here and beg Texas, please stay in the Big 12. No, I'm not going to be hitting my knees anytime soon. This video is going to be completely and utterly arguments for Texas staying in the Big 12. I can't believe I'm arguing for Texas, but in order to make this a conversation, let's do it. Okay. First off, I just want to address all the people who are bringing OU and A&M into this mix. <gasps> Big Ten's going for Texas. Why not OU and A&M? Is it because Texas is better? Okay, first off, as a Sooners fan, am I supposed to be jealous about this? Uh, you tell me. Am I supposed to be depressed that the Big Ten hasn't come a-knocking on our door? Huh? I'm, I am more than happy that the Big Ten has not come a-calling. Because we've got more important things to worry about right now, like spring training. And as far as not recruiting OU because they're just not better, well, I'm trying to, I'm trying to explore this from the perspective of a Big Ten conference. All right, Texas, Oklahoma. Which team is going to be more receptive to us? Let's take Oklahoma. Oklahoma has no reason to go to the Big Ten. They have enjoyed tremendous success in the Big 12. They've, run, they've won six Big 12 conference championships. The only team to win three in a row. They have consistent winning seasons. Why would they have any reason to join the Big Ten? And maybe the Big Ten officials are looking at the fact that other teams have tried taking Oklahoma out of the Big 12 or take Oklahoma coaches out of the Big 12, and they've seen how unsuccessful that was. So maybe they're starting to realize that Oklahoma is planted in the Big 12, doesn't want to leave the Big 12, and has no intention of leaving the Big 12. So why waste the time for a no? There's one perspective. Texas, on the other hand, Texas was wronged by the Big 12 in 2008. Wronged, I tell you! So... They're starting to debate about the legitimacy of this tiebreaker thing. They voted to keep it the same that year, but that's not the point. And then they did everything right and made it to the national championship and didn't get it. So there's still unfinished business for the Texas Longhorns. And if I'm the Big Ten Conference, I want to take that chip in Texas's shoulder and see what I can do with it. Food for thought. Now, a lot of other you guys are saying it's because OU's academics are not as good as Texas. That's exactly right. The Big Ten's not coming for us because we're too dumb. And I'm hearing you guys say it. You're actually saying beforehand, um, well, I don't know if this is true. I could be wrong. Psst, that's usually an indicator that you just shouldn't say anything at all, you know. But I think it's because Oklahoma's academics are not as good. Well, for those of you who are of that opinion, I would love to see your source. I would love to see that evidence. Because here's a little quick academic facts about Oklahoma. And you can get these off the OU website. Fact. OU is number one in the nation among all public universities. Number one in the number of national merit scholars enrolled per capita. Number one. No one beats us in that. And the scholarships just keep on coming. The Princeton Review ranks OU top 10 in the nation in terms of academic excellence. That's academic excellence. And we are first in the Big 12 in international exchange agreements with universities around the world. We've got international exchange agreements with schools from at least 66 other countries. You can get that off the OU website. So there's some facts. So trust me, it's not OU academics. But I'm done talking about my team. Texas, sit down. Let's have a chat. Rival, e-rival. Let's try to keep it as civil as possible. 
All right. Now, I can go on and on and on about how many teams from the Big Ten as compared to the Big 12 made it in the top 25 at the end of the season. And I'm going to go back the last four years and tell you how many teams there were. Now, I'm going off the AP 25, just to let you guys know. 2009, at the end of it all, four teams from the Big Ten in the top 25, three teams Big 12. You win that one, Big Ten. 2008, four teams Big Ten, four teams Big 12. Tie! 2007, four teams Big Ten, five teams Big 12. Score one. 2006, four teams Big Ten, two teams Big 12. Congrats. Congrats, Big Ten. The record is now 2-1-1. And that's just so distinctive. In the last four years, two Big 12 teams have played for the national championship. Both have lost. In the past four years, one Big Ten school has played for two national championships. Ohio State lost them both. Now, Texas, level with me here. I want you to think for a second about what it's going to do for your recruiting. You guys are already being restricted by the NCAA by making Will Muschamp your head coach and waiting. He's restricted on his visits, just like Mac Brown is now. You think you guys are going to have as much luck in Texas recruiting as you will in places like Ohio and Michigan to come play for Texas? Hey, come all the way across the country and play for us. Play against the teams you've been idealizing since you were a kid. Not only that, you've got no one on your roster from that far up north. Currently, you've got a couple guys from Colorado and one from New York. That's the closest you go. And think about what it's going to do for your recruiting in the Lone Star State. What if kids in Texas want to play for the Big 12, want to play teams like Oklahoma State and Texas Tech? And say you get OU and A&M in non-conference to keep the tradition alive. That's just assuming that you can. What if some provision keeps you from doing that? And Say kids in Texas won't be able to play Oklahoma or A&M if they join Texas, if Texas is in the Big Ten because they can't swing those non-conference games. Well, that's just going to alienate them more. And why would more kids in Texas want to fly across the country to play half of their conference games, staying, flying up there sometimes two weeks in a row? And that's a bigger stretch than you Longhorn fans may think. When you guys traveled to face Wyoming last season, what was the one thing I heard about when you guys were fell flat in the first half? And I only know this because you were telling OU fans this when they were coming after you. This is what you said. You said the elevation threw the guys off, the air's too thin. Guess what, Texas? You joined the Big Ten, that's every away game. And the teams in the Big Ten are a heck of a lot better than Wyoming. And that takes its toll on the players. You go between those two areas, those two weathers, those two different climates, it takes its toll on players. People can get sick by that. If the Texas players are huffing and puffing in the thinner and drier areas of Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, Iowa, you're SOL. That's your conference now. And that may also prove a too big of a stretch for your fans, too. Where are your fans? Texas, primarily. Where will you, all of your away games be played? Several hours. That's in the plane. I'm not saying Texas fans will make it out there. I'm not doubting the loyalty of your fan base. Trust me, I've seen your fan base in Dallas twice. I know how loyal they are, but I don't care who you are. Do you think there were many Cincinnati fans that came to Norman two seasons ago? I can attest to that, and the answer is no. Plus, there's a non-conference game scenario. Throw out Tech, Anoki State, and Baylor. Let's see you keep OU and a and That's two non-conference games lost to you to keep the tradition alive. What if you need as many quality opponents as you can grab and say OU and a and are having a down year and you're having another hot year? You're SOL again. Now let's be honest here, you guys are not connoisseurs for choosing challenging non-conference schedules. Last year, cut you a break, you had schools flake on you. But the last time you had a quality non-conference opponent was 2006, Ohio State. Got your tails handed to you. Who wants that kind of limitation put on you in the non-conference schedule when I've already mentioned all these other obstacles? And this video has gone on too long, I'm probably going to have to make a second part. <sighs> yeah, you know, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make this video two parts because of the whole 10-minute rule. I'll catch you guys later.